A U.S. defense official has warned that Russia could defeat NATO forces in just 60 hours. Michael Carpenter, the U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary for Defense for Russia, Ukraine, and Eurasia, has told the Senate Foreign Relations Committee that NATO was not prepared and could not adequately defend members Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, as reported by News.com. But he said the U.S. would be in better shape by 2017. I will say that in my conversations and travels with my counterparts that I have heard significant concern but um, I think a lot of our partners believe that we will remain committed members of NATO, in fact, who play a leadership role in the alliance. Um, the Russians are able to move huge formations and lots of equipment a long distance very fast. Uh, their snap exercises that they do, um, I personally am surprised each time they do it. Uh, and so you can see why that, that scares You mean about the speed and scale that they can bring to bear? Yeah. Well, when they 20,000 troops, you know, a lot of equipment shows up on the border of a NATO country or maybe a, somebody like Georgia or Ukraine. Uh, that is concerning. Uh, the Russians have what uh, we call freedom of movement on interior lines. They can move anywhere inside Russia as fast as they want. In order for our political leaders to have options other than a liberation campaign, we need to match that same speed inside NATO. You don't have that speed today. No. Uh, we need the, what I would call a military Schengen zone that would allow the military to move inside. A British convoy, an American convoy, a German convoy should be able to go anywhere inside uh, NATO in order to have the same freedom of movement. And I'm talking about three days. Three days notification, we ought to be able to do that. We absolutely don't have that right now. I think that's a necessary part of uh, uh, this deterrence, that the alliance is shifting from assurance to deterrence. So that's you're saying speed. that right now, and in a very frank way, you're saying that right now you do not have deterrence because the enemy, and that is what you've called the Russians, no, they, they know that you can't do that. Deterrence is in the mind of the potential adversary, obviously. We absolutely do have deterrence. But I'm uneasy about my ability to assemble quickly or for others to be able to assemble quickly. Um, and, and so I'm going to continue trying to explain why this matters. It's, it's not for our convenience. It's for um, the ability to give political leaders options short of having to do a liberation campaign. My assessment today, Senator, is that Russia presents the greatest threat to our national security. Is to start killing Russians, killing Russians by uh, s killing so many Russians that even Putin's media can't hide the fact that Russians are returning to the motherland in body bags. He also used the uh, that phrase that its army, meaning Russia's army, on NATO's doorstep. Um, why is that? Is is it not logical? to look at this and say the reason that the Russian army is on NATO, uh, the, the Russian army is at NATO's doorstep is because NATO has expanded rather than the, the Russians expanding? That, in other words, NATO has moved closer to Russia rather than Russia moving closer to NATO? Is that not an accurate way to look at this? So well, do you not understand how, or can you not even see how the Russians would perceive it as a, as a threat, and the fact that it keeps getting closer to their border. NATO is a defensive alliance. It remains a defensive alliance. Fair enough, but it has moved east. Correct? I mean, that's just a it fact. It has expanded, absolutely. Right, exactly. But and there's so the no reason, reason for anybody to think the expansion is a hostile or threatening move. Okay. And we've been saying that throughout the last 15 years, well, Matt. It's like getting, you're, you're, you're moving closer to Russia. You're blaming the Russians for being close to NATO. No, 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 no. That's, <laughs> that's exactly what... Hey, and an increased number of Russian forces inside of Ukraine. I, I don't like to use numbers because the minute you use a number, it's going to be exactly wrong. And our intelligence is not perfect.
Зокрема, до речі, я можу сказати, що з початку воєнного конфлікту нами віддокументовано участь 56 росіян, 56 громадян Росії, які воювали проти нас. Приїхав в Луганськ, в Донецьк і в Дніпропетровськ, я побачив, що во багатьох випадках наше государство і наші спецслужби діють як терористи. Але цього не хочуть определені сили, які на даний момент просто ділять Україну або заробляють гроші на війні.